I'm with Shanto Begay. Shanto, this is your show. Thank you very much, Mark. This yeah. is my show. Yeah, you know, it's funny how shows happen like this. You know, you and I were in Indian Market. You came and you had some great new work. And I was like, man, why don't we just do a show? And you go, okay. <laughs> and so we just put a great show together. You painted some wonderful images. But one of the things I wanted to do, because you of all people really have a sense of what these paintings mean to you. And I think as an artist, I really find it interesting because, you know, I've been doing this 30 years now. Certain artists have a deep sensibility to their paintings. Not all do. You do. And um, I always find the paintings come to life when I hear a little bit about each one and what, what it meant to you. So I thought we could just go through, a, through these, maybe just starting with uh, the top one, because uh, I find it interesting you chose an owl, because in some societies, some native societies, that might have a negative connotation. Does that have any na that way with you or not? Not at all, not at all. When I painted the owl, I did it purely as a, um, as, as a sign of hope and wisdom, uh, you know, I was, I was doing a lot of these during the time of drought, the summer. Mm. Some of these about calling the rain, and um, the owl is a, is a very good metaphor, you know, to bridge the spirit world, the cloud world, to, to ours. So that's why the sky, the clouds are, you know, have their own life going. And that's like a Chen Di right up there with the figure on the horse. The cloud, or what is that? There, there is no Chindi involved here. <laughs> Good. See, this is why you have him yeah. speak and not there me. There is no Chindi involved. This is all just positive. It's, ah, got it. Okay. It's it's, it's a hope and wisdom, hope for the rain. And does that represent okay. a, any particular thing? I mean, I see a horse and rider. I don't know if that's. It's a building. The building of the thunderhead to deliver the uh, life-giving moisture to the land. But um, <clears throat> as I was going along. Things tend to invent themselves. Almost I see. invent themselves. And then with a few strokes, you get it. You nailed it to a point where you're not feeding your audience, but you're not letting them think a little. That's what happened here. This weapon. That's what happened here. Mm. It just all came together, and I figured that's where they belong. That's a fantastic painting. So, and I, I, I said I wanted to. I always wanted to work with you know that whole kinetic energy. Yes. You know. Yeah, you feel it in this painting for sure. Yeah. For sure. And so on this one, tell me about the riders. First of all, do you ride horses? I, I, not as much anymore. Yeah. The last time I rode a horse, actually, it's kind of funny because I, I went all the way back east to Georgia. Yeah. I said, I haven't ridden a horse. Oh, the Booth many, Museum. I haven't, I haven't ridden a horse in many years. And I had to come to Georgia to do this. Right. But that was fantastic. Yeah. So I did. I do. I grew up on it. So I, I hearken back on it a lot of time in memory, yeah. in motion. Yeah, this one has a lot of kinetic energy to me, yeah. too. Because I, I feel like you know, the, you know the work, the style I do is very conducive to that energy, to yes. that rhythm. And I just want to continue that with various, in various form. And the horse is coming back in a late evening, crossing a fresh rain pond, mm. you know, in the late evening. And one of the things I notice about it, I mean, I've been collecting your work for like uh -huh. 15 years now and representing you, I think, for 10. But this one seems to have more color in this area. and the. And this even, it seems, the water seems to be, I don't know, tighter. There's, there's a different sensibility. You, is that true, do you think? Or is that just me over-evaluating? No, I think, I think it's true. I think it's true. I had to build, I had to build, um, I had to build that up. I had to build that, the, the, the color scheme in the back, you know. You know, it was a nice dance. Mm. It goes one way, it gets a little too cool. Mm -hmm. It gets a little too light, it gets too... A little too warm, so I think it's to find, find find a nice, you know, middle ground. Yeah, that's really successful. And this one was featured in Western Art Collector as well. Well, let's talk about the main painting of the show, which this painting is what really I think kind of kicked it off for me because when I saw this, you'd put it up on Facebook, and I was blown away, especially not only by the imagery but just by the size. The size of this thing is monumental. This is one of your larger paintings that you've done, would yeah. you say? Other than murals, which you've done yeah. some major murals. Well, I've got two more on the, on, on, on the ease of the size. So, yeah, it is a, it is a, it's a large one. I haven't done a large one in a while. It's almost like doing a mural, which is what I like. I like working large mm -hmm. because it allows you to use your whole body. It's like a dance. It's not like, you know, you know doing small work where you're just working from your elbow, your shoulder. Right. It's, it's really just a whole body. And where is this supposed uh, to be? Is this up by Shanto or is this over? This is a, this is a, a, a um, unconventional view of my own homeland. Looking down as you, as you crest Mesa, 
coming off the mesa down to where I live, where my studio is. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like with black mesa in the background, again with the outcroppings of sandstones, and all the sandstones, slick rocks, sand dunes, sage flats, PJ forests, PJ yeah. juniper. Yeah, it's and, beautiful. Uh, you, know, you know, just kind of kind of sweeping way into the valley. I loved it. I love that imagery and I see this every week. So I never, I never tired. It's what I grew up among. So it's, yeah. it's always, there's always like a, 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 something that stabilizes the heart, something that really brings, yeah. keeps you home. I was there two days ago with all the rain and all this stone was yeah. just this color. It was just so vivid. It was just incredible. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the, this grouping of paintings. So this grouping, I think, may be the most powerful, at least to me. Um, tell me about this painting and what it represents, because I, I see all sorts of things, but it's, you know, it's yours. Yeah. Well, losing my, losing spirit. my spirit for salvation right. is what I titled this one. And um, this is my second attempt at doing this particular image, because it is uh, kind of partially off the dream, partially of um, reality, but mm -hmm. both ma mainly it's about acculturation. You know, growing up you know, at, uh, at my father's feet, at my grandfather's feet, who are all medicine men, a Navajo practitioner of, of that, that's, that, that, with that world. Is that the nature? World? The, na the world that The world that makes me part of the land. Yes. Part of the sandstone. The world that makes me part of the ancient pictographs and petroglyphs yeah, you can see and all, this, here, all the old here, stories here. the yeas yeah. but it was a, it was a Christianity that came to me and said you know you know get yourself out of there right. break away from that the angels will save you so this is salvation yes suppose salvation but I'm losing my spirit because I'm tempted by those beautiful stories and yeah. you know so this is this is just a commentary on that losing my yeah. losing my spirit songs for for, for, for something alluring. So and this what is it about. And then tell <clears throat> me about this um, piece right here with the uh, corn grinder. The corn grinding stand here, it's an old Hogan site. Yeah. It's like an eroded away, just a couple of logs left, and uh, it's overgrown again, reclaimed by sagebrush. And the storm is coming again, just like the other painting here. Right. It's calling the rain. The storm is coming. A dark uh, thunder, thunder hits coming. So I wanted that to be to feel that to feel that air rushing into your face, you know, in front of and the then storm. Yet the, and the, the, and still <laughs> here, right? Man and, goes, and but the ants. Yet the don't. ant are still there, and yeah. the ant will always be there. So they're part of the, the continuing, the continuing making that earth, that piece of earth, you know. Yeah, I love that. Moving. I, <laughs> and then on this one, with the, where you could see the image through the land, you know, that's night. That, so it's called Nightwalker, and is it, yeah. so. Tell me about that. That. I mean that has a lot of different connotations to me. I, I think I think for me that was just kind of um, you know tickling the spirit world. Mm -hmm. You know the p people who passed, people I know who passed on, and still walk in the land. You know just kind of you know to wh where they belonged. Yes. You know so there was you know just just uh, making the. the but again, a, human. a positive connotation. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh huh. About you know, connecting the both again. It's you know it's just we're the, all one. Yes. Yeah. That's a very cool piece. And now tell me, now you like imagery of junipers and grandmother and grandfather trees, which I think is some of your strongest work. Um, tell me about this and, and maybe even this really, I feel like this cosmos you've really highlighted compared to maybe some of the other yeah. pieces I've seen before. Yeah, this is a, a, a continuation of my homage to um, a grandfather tree, Juniper. Mm. I've done a bunch of that, and of course, the, the pinion tree, the grandfather, the grandmother. So this is, a, I guess it was, it's always about calling strength, calling stability, calling deep rootedness. Mm. And this is, one of, this is one of those pieces I did as seen from the, from the late night campfire, you know, looming over you, protecting you, you know, sharing the consolation with you. And um, so it was about that, you know, about finding, you know, safe and peace and strength in, in the grandfather tree. And, and of course, would, I, like the, I, like the, I like the whole movement. Yes. And a, a grandfather versus a grandmother tree, how would, is that just something that comes to you versus 
us knowing how how could I tell that's a grandfather versus like a grandmother tree? Well, the grand, grandmother tree would be jun pi pinion tree. Pinion. It'd okay. be the pin pine. Juniper, on the other hand, is grandfather. It always it, it's it always is. Juniper so, is always yeah grandfather, and then a pinion is always grandmother. the grandmother. Yeah. So you know that the first juniper in the morning when I encounter just shaking its limbs to say yet is a tree. Hello, my grandfather. And to the pinion tree, yet a shemasana. Hello, my grandmother. Yeah. So that's uh, that's 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 part of the thing that we do. Yes. You know, we're a funny bunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this painting, <laughs> I just got to tell you, it's one that I'd love to take home. I just, I just see the young love. It's powwow love. Tell me a little bit about this, and especially some of the what are what's yeah, yeah. on the yeah. for us non-native Diné speakers. Well, this is the um, kind of a, a powwow that we part of a ceremony, a little party, I should say, called Forty Nine. Mm. Usually, it happens not within the power ground or part of the power, but it's something after more, a little bit more lighthearted. People are mm -hmm. partying, drums are drums are beaten and right. songs are sung, and it's a whole thing, you know, you know a little bit more lighthearted. Would it be more young people or more young yeah, people, more young people? So that's what happens. Forty nine, forty nine event. And I put through some of my own friends in there, like Clarence Clearwater is playing guitar here. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, he's entertaining. And somebody's over here snagging. <laughs> There's always a street dog or something like that there. And these young, and these young guys, young lovers here, but they're sitting on it because there's a brake light. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and she, that is my clan. Uh -huh. My clan, my mother's clan, my father's clan. So this is just defines me. Yes. It might as well be my signature. Yes, it is, so right. And yeah. And bitter water. Yadilla just means, you know, the, you know, just kind of resigning in, you know, frustration. Mm -hmm. in a, you know, in, in a light way, not mm -hmm. in a terrible way. Mm -hmm. I throw your hand up and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you put the Thunderbird, like, pan Indian symbol on his chest. I did, I did. Yeah, which so, I think is wonderful. And and this, I guess this grouping is, is uh, allowed me to do more figurative. These are older pieces, figurative work, you know, you can do you know, the human in a situation. Yes. A, a cat in a cradle. Yes. You know, doing that. And the cat back over here, and just drawing, just just bringing back childhood memories. And this around. is just kind of a what you would ex instead of JFK in the back, it's yes. Obama, right. and you've got the Navajo basket on the back. Right inside the whole gun wall, because I grew up in a I grew up personally I grew up in a series of Hogan that always had a JFK tapestry. Yes, you know that was always constant. I was taking out the wall and one place, which I was always JFK. And Jesus herding the sh leading the sheep home, uh -huh. and our Lady Guadalupe. So the three of them were always part of the, the Holy Trilogy. And was there <laughs> any other art on the Hogan's walls at all? Do you remember? Uh, well, you know, Paisley's. Uh huh. So <laughs> somebody covered the whole inside of the Hogan with my aunt covered the whole inside of the Hogan with a, a cloth, a beautiful cloth. A Paisley. A, Was a she Paisley. an artist? No, no, she's uh, it's, it's just available. Yeah. So I grew up seeing Paisley a lot in the Hogan. Paisley, and I always liked Paisley. That's yes. Why, yeah. Well, when you look <laughs> at your backgrounds, you see that too, and in a sensibility. Yeah. Have you ever thought of that? That that. Is... Yeah, I think I, I think I know that, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that you mention that, that's crazy. And this one is really interesting. Tell me about that. Finding directions. So is that again a, uh -huh. a sense of hope? A sense of hope and finding, you know, just what it said, just. Just uh, um, sometimes it's the, it's the youngsters that guide us. You know, a lot of times we don't have to rely on the the, 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 innocent, the innocent depth in us to guide us in life. And you see, kind of, you see, you'll see this figure in some historic works too. This yeah. kind of, I mean, Maynard Dixon even kind of did some sensibilities with the figure like that. Mm -hmm. Is and you're, you know, you're trained academically trained. Is do you find that any of that comes from a historical? Perspective, or is it just came out of you? No, it just came out of the um, context of a dream or something like that. Yes, an image. You know what? I guess most artists see is that um, you know just the mystery, the forlorn. Yes, the hope. Yes, you know something that's not so colorful, something that's you know steeped in mystery. I think this is the kid is especially uh -huh. well done. I mean, it's just 
it's ethereal, but I don't know. She, they just blend into one. It's a really beautiful, it's a beautifully done painting. So when I see this painting, and I love going up to the Navajo Reservation, the Hopi Reservation, I love that whole area. I feel immediately at home. But I, you see this kind of, you know, guys catching rides in the back. And, you know, if you could just talk about the shed with the face, because I've seen those lately popping up too, which are wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just this great art out in the middle of nowhere on an abandoned yeah. building. What is that? Tell, who's doing what? that? My friend, his name is Chip Thomas. He's a medical doctor up in Navajo That's Reservation. That's it, Chip Thomas. Yeah. Chip is out. Um, I work under um, Jetsorama. Yeah. And they, Jetsorama, they did a plaster and wheat pasting, this beautiful, his own photograph. He's a good photographer. Yeah, I've seen those. And so he does, uh, blows them up in some manner and uh, wheat pastes them. Yeah. Amazing stuff all over. I'm all, it's always happy to, and well, it, because they're not permanent, they're like sand paint. Yes, right. You see the image, it stays with you, and eventually it goes away. Yes. And so I, 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 like, I like it. Yeah. I like that. You know, it's a very sacred form of a communication, nothing that just sticks you know, with you all the time. And you see them out yeah. you know, in places that are really remote. Yes. It's just, it's just a, catching a glimpse of something beautiful, yes. a passing glimpse. Yeah. Just like this, the car will truck will pass this. Yes. And then it will be on in, into another area of beauty. So it's a continuous movement down. And I kind of stay with the, uh, the current situation, like the Nance for Press. Yeah. It's, a, it's an Navajo you know, election this year. And right. I just had to throw that in. You know, just, uh -huh. and, uh -huh. <laughs> that, are you for, voting for Nance? <laughs> well, he's from my community. And he's a young man, and, I, and, and I, I, I do. And then, so, yeah, and Skoden? Skoden was a word I heard first when I was up in Standing Rock uh -huh. a couple of years ago. It was a Skoden, you know, Skoden. And there was, a, there, was, there was a picture of a guy, a native guy, you know, all, 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 all you know, ready to fight here. Right. In that stance, I was Skoden. I said, I wonder what that means. I wonder what that means after here. But then finally, I asked somebody, and she says, she laughed and said, it just means the Skoden. <laughs> that's funny. Let's go then. Yeah, that's so, so that word is beautiful. That it, 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 it's like it's a rally. Yeah, it's a, this is a rally. Go forth. Yeah, you know. And yet you have the little gummy <laughs> oh, yeah. bear looking thing. What is they're, that? The, the, the Grateful Dead. Oh, that's the Grateful Dead. I should have known. Yeah. <laughs> I should have known. Yeah. So, and then the guys inside and girls too. The guys inside have their own dramas. Now this guy's probably just joined down the road, you know, back out to Mexican Hat or some place yeah. like that. And this guy, of course, uh, looks like he's going to Missoula. Yeah. And uh, so he's kind of... Um, he's catching his ride. He's catching his ride. He probably isn't paying his dollar mm -hmm. to get on either. Right. And so they're giving him a ride and just, you know, just going down the road, yeah. head, heading north. And, they're, so, and she's looking at the, yeah. at the piece, and he is too. The rest right. are kind of oblivious. And I always like the faces that are uh -huh. in, the, in the mirror. Yeah. To, <laughs> and, and you did a big one, which we sold to the herd that uh, right. museum permanent collection it was kind of in this not this but it was the sensibility right. of the right. truck and uh, just a wonderful piece tell us about that painting that's a it's a it's a very strong painting in my opinion well, star yeah, bathers it is star bathers it's a it's a, it's a, it's a nice uh, melding of the human figure again with the with the, with, the uh, with landscape and light or lack of in this case it just highlighted the stars the constellation the moon beam yes and that was a, uh, that's what I like, you know, about you know, the whole gentle little close setting of it in the embrace, in the slop can, in yeah. the water, you know. I first started, the first, the first one I did was uh, of two girls from Ohio. They were in, in the San Juan River, that one night, in that beautiful full moon mm. coming up behind the totem and oh, just yeah. in, the, in the river. Was this up where, by t Mexican Hat or somewhere? Yeah, near Mexican, yeah. just north of Mexican Hat. Yeah. But, but I really liked it. I really liked that image that stayed with me. Yeah. You know, you know. So I, I continued working with that. And of course, it's an image I, I, I know well. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, it's a wonderful <laughs> image. And then, you know, we have contrasting, really contrasting images with the bright light of the, you know, the mountains, the mesas, and the cold and you can really feel the cold and you know and I bet I mean you know I've never spent time in a Hogan you know in the dead of winter what's that like where it's really cold and quiet and and it's very cold and quiet yeah right <laughs> <laughs> and you can hear like everything you can hear a snow crunching yes. by a critter walking maybe just hundreds of yards away yes you hear the coyote howling off the mesa, clear. 
and it's just a beautiful time. It's very quiet. And when it says a lot of snow, of course, it's always warm in the Hogan because the snow insulates the Hogan yes. even further. And inside the hearth, of course, I put a little glow of warmth in there. Right. So it's still, still a warmth is what it is in the midst of the coldest night, the coldest time of winter. And I was born in the coldest time of winter. Mm. So that's, I, I go back to that. I go back to the, you know, the time when there's snow and dark and moonlight. And again, I think your skies have even gotten more complex over time. This is a new painting. I don't know, again, I don't know if it's me, but it seems like there is more complexity in this. Yeah. They are getting more complex. Yeah. What mm -hmm. do you think? Why is that? Can you p put your hand, finger on why that is? I guess because the universe is always moving. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it is. But um, I guess I'm just trying to um, navigate through all of that. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the constellation. I love them. I think yeah. it's fantastic. And then you have this painting, which to me is any place I think of the Navajo Nation. I see. Yeah, I see this. I don't know if this was a specific area. That well, it's not, not a specific area. It's based on a specific a place. Mm. But this is one of those pieces I wanted to do where it would, how where would I would have to put my shades on? Yeah, <laughs> right. Because it's so bright yeah. because of reflection. And it is. It is coming. It is. It is a cloud break. A cloud break. You know. So, the, you know. So so the light are so intense. I like this kind of. Um, play of light because yeah this it, contrast it, it, it really defines depth it and, does uh, you know it just really defines you know the, um, all, all of that and, uh, just like let just like a smoke on a mountain yes you know everything seems so flat on a clear day and then when when there's fire it just fills the valleys and you can have sea separation and light does that and yeah. of course you have the the ravens yeah just kind of snuck in there with and they're always out there in the rest they're always talking they are they always the, Scheming. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So this is old school for sure, right? I mean, this feels like I'm going back to uh, pre-1864. I would say, yes it is. Um, in, the, in the days following Fort Sumner, is what I titled this. It is, um, of course, um, the, the Navajo returning back after four years imprisonment. Yes. Vasco Redondo. Yeah. Which you did the murals for yes, as sir. well. It's so, out there in Fort Sumner. In which Mexico. I grew up right over that area. Yeah. yeah, I always knew about it. <laughs> you know, it was, a, yeah. in, in a, not a, maybe in a good way. I knew it was yes. a haunting. You know. Some march out there. Yeah. At least you were under the, the, uh, the, the army protection and threats going over there. But coming back on your own, you're pretty much an open game to slave traders, everything. raiders, everything. Uh, so right, and you have no food, you and your, no, all your sheep are gone. So you have to be always on the watch out, always on the lookout, gathering water, you know, do everything you do, coming, you know, just being always vigilant. So, so this is what, what, what I played with here, and the butterfly as a means of free, being free. Yes. Being free. Yeah, you can see that yeah. it's gone through with the, the dress is worn out and it's had issues. It is, and the ravens are always out there and they could be, uh, you know, there's something maybe looking for that they're carrying. So yeah. there was something already gone. So they're also kind of, in this case, maybe something not so friendly. Yeah. Uh -huh, symbolically. But it is. Uh, and then up above is prehistoric and stuff? Or? Up above is a reflection of the Anasazi cliff dwelling. Yes. So, so I wanted to throw that to age, you know, hundreds of years before and hundreds of years afterward, you know, you know, we still have to be vigilant. Yes. Yeah, we're still got new life yeah. even under all this. Right. Yeah, that's a strong yeah. painting. Now that you explain it, I really see why she's pensive. Mm -hmm. you know, she's on guard for she's sure. She's on guard always. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely, especially after that. And then this painting really gets to the root of Dene mythology, the hero twins. Yes. And for those people who don't know a little bit of the hero twins of what you can tell us as non Dene people, tell, give us a little history. Well, this is my depiction of the hero twins, the Navajo hero twins, born for water, enemy slayer. Yes. And so they are the one born into the world, into the fourth world, to save the fourth world from monsters. And like in every 
cultural stories. There is a, a Messiah figure, mm -hmm. always born sometimes of a miraculous birth. And this happened here too as well. White shall one give birth to the hero twins and they were born for water and the sun. Their job is to rid the earth, the fourth world of monsters that was already here. Right, monsters. So this is a, this, this is a, they're landing on, a, on, on the mode of transportation of the rainbow. From the third world to the fourth. Rainbow. The yeah. gift, uh, gift given from them by the father, their father, the son, mm. and lightning weapons, mm. arrows and lightning weapons, but traveling on a ribbon of rainbow. One by one, the great monsters fell. One by one, you know, that the land began reclaimed. Great mountain ranges fell. Great lakes dried up. Mm. And there's a time when people moved underground. So that the most amazing, tumultuous time when the monsters were slain one by one by the hero twins. And finally, the earth is calm, calmed. And it was always said, we people, we live safely, sacredly, in the four, within the four sacred, sacred mountain. Mm. The sacred mountain to the east, mm. out there, Black Hill, yeah. south, Southern Colorado. Yeah. The sacred mountain to the south, down in Taylor. The sacred mountain to the west, San Francisco Peaks area, yes. and North Hesperus. Right. So I put those in there to kind of frame the whole, the whole um, epic scene. Then I you know, trying, trying to bring, yeah, trying to bring, just bring, trying to bring as much of the story into one. One image yeah. is what, what I and the monsters were never really literally described, how, so it was open to interpretation. Right, right. So and it still can't be. Yes, <laughs> but today, today's monsters, today's monsters are working with these like uh, coal fire power plants. Yes, and, and the likes. Yes, things know. that destroy the earth. Yeah, that and also addictions. Yes, these are modern day yates of the monsters. Yes, the twins. And one of the things I, I, I tell students at school in various areas is to reawaken because it is the reawakening of the hero twins within us. Yes, be vigilant. Be vigilant, and therefore, because we're surrounded by monsters, the latter day monsters of the swarm, so it's still with us. Shanta Begay, <laughs> you're always a pleasure. Thank you so much for Thank taking you, the time. People who are out here, come see the show. We always have Shanta's work up at Medicine Man Gallery. We have a great show that's up through the uh, next couple of months. So come see it. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Brought to you by Medicine Man Gallery. Located for over 26 years in Tucson, Arizona. Specializing in antique Native American art, early Western art, including the famed Maynard Dixon, as well as modern art. You can find everything online at medicinemangallery.com. There's over 6,000 objects to select from. Also, the Charles Bloom Murder Mystery Series, written by yours truly, me, Mark Sublet. There's six books in this series, and they follow the protagonist Charles Bloom through all the intrigue of the art world set in Santa Fe and the Navajo Nation. These can be found on Audible, eBooks, Amazon, and of course, the gallery at medicinemangallery.com. Listen to the Art Dealer Diaries. That's my new podcast. And, you know, I interview all sorts of interesting people that come through my life, whether it's an art dealer or a collector or an artist, somebody that I find interesting, and I think you will too. So listen to the Art Dealer Diaries. You can find it on YouTube and on any podcast uh, forum.